Wow, that was uh, fabulous. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is, this is thank you. Bravo, bravo, beautiful. Do you like to play together? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can tell. You know, it's like good, good. Mina, right? Mina, okay. Um, wow, what, you know, it's so, such a delightful piece. What do you love about it and what's hard about it? Oh my gosh, you asked the tough questions. Okay. Um, well, this piece to me is really awesome because I love how Tchaikovsky is always, there's always a little bit of ballet in it. And in this piece, there's a whole lot of ballet in it. And I just love the idea, um, kind of what you talked about, time travel. Because Tchaikovsky himself was time traveling back to Mozart's time. And we're traveling back to both of those times. And so I guess I just, I love, um, I guess, the elegance of the piece. There's, even in the hard stuff, it's always, um, me and Marnie were talking about how it's kind of like male ballerinas <laughs> and like how they're so strong. Any male ballerinas out there? Um, how they're so strong <laughs> and yet so light. Um, so I guess that's kind of tying into what's hard about this piece is that I think as a cellist, I, or as a me, <laughs> I want to like get into it, which I probably maybe do too much sometimes, but I think it's, it's that balance between like being so strong but being so graceful. And like even like in the really technically hard stuff, it's always like sparkly and like, ee. yeah, that's not a very good description, but ee. No, I think ee sounds really good. I like that. Um, um, I, you know, uh, so let me ask you something. When you're playing something that's obviously hard, right, like the last variation or the second variation or whatever, um, should it sound hard? No? Well, okay, kind of, because... I think, like, going back to my male ballerinas, like, it should be like, wow, like, that's impressive, but it's, how do they make it look so easy? Or like, Olympic gymnasts, or whatever. Uh, and you know that it takes a lot, but it's still so effortless. It's like, they were meant to do that. Or, so in other words, it may, we may realize that what you're doing may be incredibly hard, but you are just able to toss it off because you're so awesome, right? No, no, I mean, that's, I, I, that's really important to, to you know, define whether, because sometimes you could be playing something easy and, and you want it to sound physically hard, right? Like in Beethoven, often, you, you know, a half step or even one step is, could be a very physical thing to achieve, and, but it's actually just a note part. So it's actually technically easy, but you may want it to sound expressively hard. But this is something that is actually, we can see, you know, like you're all over the fingerboard and, and, and playing fast. So I assume, not knowing anything about this poor instrument, uh, I, I think it's, it must be really hard, but boy, you're tossing it off, right? Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Um, First of all, I thought you played with great elegance, and the fact that you could smile your way through, you know, the beginning, I, you know, it's like you almost, I felt like you almost went to the Yo-Yo Ma shit-eating grin school, which is... I did, I did attend, and graduated. Yeah, well, not yet. Okay. Sorry, anyway, you know, my family always makes, thinks that I'm like mugging too much, says, you know, just stop it, you know, so, so, you know, I don't know what to do, but I like to smile. Anyway, um, so, the third variation and sixth variation, can we talk a little bit about that? I'd like to suggest, um, I, I, I think, I think, longer phrases. Uh, I feel that, you know, if you are, um, you have so many quick scenes, yeah. right? The theme is quick, and it's like, almost like a whole world comes in, Bang, first variation, second variation, which you toss up, and then sort of like, 
okay, this is a, you know, this is a ba ballet aria, and you want to kind of really, maybe it's two people dancing, and then it's like, so you, you do want it to not stop. The same thing with the, with the, the sixth variation. And in the cadenza, I would say, since it is not metric, what you do really want to have, the, the, the probably is to experiment with the idea of stopping time. So, so whatever you do, pregnant pauses, not pauses that go to, you know, you're never at zero. You're always on high alert. Everybody should be on it, like what is she gonna do next? Kind of thing, right? So in terms of, of dramatic content, those are a couple things. Um, do you have any questions for me? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I guess when you're playing a whole piece like this, um, what's going on in your head? <laughs> I can tell you, uh, in, in the third, and I think character, uh, I'm thinking always uh, in, the, in the theme, for example, or the first version, da 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 ya ba ba da da ba da 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 bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I'm always thinking orchestra part. Uh, because, and it's, it's how I'm relating to, and for example, in the third variation, it's mm, ba, mm, ba, da, ba, da, da, mm, ba, da, da, two, three, da, one, da, 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 going to the last bar, ba, to the second bar, da, da. Ba da 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 to the fourth bar. Ba da 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 ya da 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 two three. So basically, second bar, fourth bar, eighth bar. Da 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 fourth bar. Da 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 fourth bar. Da 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 second bar. Da 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 bar, one da 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 da, ya da 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 fourth bar, da 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 one then back to the same thing. So once you do that, if you know that, you could actually play around and be so totally free, but everybody knows where you're going. Try that. Let's let's see whether that go, goes on. And so that's one thing I think about. Last movement, and we, which we will try, is I would always focus on the, you know, the groove. And play on top of the groove. Don't, you don't need to assert yourself and show how fabulous you, you are. The more you actually go you know, it's just, it's like making sure that it's fun, jocular, playful, scintillating, sizzling, and then, but if you keep it going all the way through, it's tremendous. Okay, and, and it's like, it goes beyond technique, it's just believing that this is what's, what's driving it. Let's do the third one. Okay. So second beat, second bar, or fourth bar, or eighth bar.
Yes. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I mean, two things happen. Basically, sound goes away. You have less traction, right? And then the other thing that happens is, is first of all, you get a crick in your neck, which is that's bad stuff. But um, but in terms of sound, um, either it gets pinched, right? Because you know you're putting vertical pressure rather than pulling. So you you go, you know you you sit on someone's face. You know they go like, yeah, like that. You know, the same thing happens to, to you know. You sit on that thing, it's like, you know, it, Tello don't like that. Yeah. yeah. So you got to kind of, the more you pull yeah. or push or pull and push, the more you actually get a happy cello. Mm -hmm. And we want happy cellos. Okay, so just try the beginning of that. Ba, da, da, and I'm just going to just be focused on not, uh, not necessarily every down bow towards the tip is a decrescendo. You want to feel that you actually have you know, without having to press or try too hard, you have to find the body alignment so you're balanced, so you can, as if this were a down bow. I mean, the end of a down bow might, you, you, you want to feel as if you were at the end of an up bow. So, you know, that should be equal. Just try that. One, two, go. <laughs> Good. Does that help? Did, really, really? You're not saying that because I'm asking you to say yes? Okay. Because, you know, sometimes that happens. Did that feel better? Okay, so basically, we talked about two things. Um, I had, a, you had one reaction to say, you know, phrase length, phrase direction, and the other part is a technical thing, right? So actually, it's the fusion of technical, uh, you know, uh, management, of uh, right shoulder with idea-related uh, thing. Those two things, I think, we seem to have happy camper listeners. Okay, good. So um, I would say, without going into the sixth variation, that would be the same idea. You know. Okay. So let's try a little bit of the last movement. And um, so basically. Uh, so just keep playing and don't start, okay? Just go. What? Fitzenhagen. exactly. Fitzenhagen. Uh, you, yeah. Fitzenhagen. If you can say Fitzenhagen that quickly, um, you enter into the Michael Tilson Thomas pantheon of verbal virtuosity. I don't know. I, uh, she says German. I think fits in Hagen Das is what I think. Of. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Anyway, this whole piece, this whole piece is very much fits in Hagen Stick. This uh, also wrote pieces of stuff. And all these stunts, especially this last one, stunts, are just clearly things that he could just do effortlessly. And that's why Tchaikovsky wrote them. And they've been torturing everyone ever since. Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to ask you to try something. Okay. <laughs> this is actually, this is really neat because, because this actually, probably, Tchaikovsky knew this instrument. Um, this instrument lived in St. Petersburg, and it was given by a Polish count uh, when he was around 70 years old to the greatest Russian cellist at that time, uh, 
and uh, his name was Carl Davidoff. So I think Witzenhagen, Davidoff, Tchaikovsky, they were all kind of, you know, they're in, in the equivalent of the New World Symphony. Uh, <laughs> You know, and uh, so I think it would be nice. Now, I'd like you to try, so just now play, right? And you don't play, just listen, yup, bup, bup, but just keep it rolling and, and vamp until we're ready. We're just gonna have a little talk. Okay, so, so basically, play, okay, so don't, don't play much, but toss it, it doesn't matter whether you're gonna hear tune, nothing, you know. All I want is the right energy, okay? You know, and not necessarily loud. Got it? So, and then, you know, forget any of this shit. Just, just go. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, was that fun? Yes. What, what was fun about it? Um, playing your cello. <laughs> um, no, uh, just the collective energy of everybody, and it wasn't like just trying to, it was like everyone was with me at the party. Yeah, you, and, and what united them? The rhythm. So, did you feel like you were riding the rhythm? Mm, yes. <laughs> Is that a very powerful feeling? Yes, very. Extremely powerful. You know, isn't it neat that for something incredibly powerful, you don't have to be the principal activator? It's awesome. It's better that way. Doesn't that take some of the pressure off? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I liked when they clapped really loudly. Cause... <laughs> yeah. You know, See, what I do, I tell you, I give you, give you all my secrets, like, you know, when, when I, people are not clapping loudly and I need to kind of get writing, write the rhythm, I just scrub. Mm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like I'm playing, you know, but it's actually not, you know, because I realize, I'm slightly kidding, but, but what I'm trying to say is that really it's finding at any moment what your priorities are. So for the Bach suite, we were determining 
I guess, you know, uh, we were trying to determine that the priority was to actually make certain notes important in people's minds, so important that they hold on to it in their minds, even when you're not playing it. And for you, that while you're obviously doing something that sounds like the most important thing on stage, that actually there's something else that's going on that actually helps you become the most important thing, but you, by not you are asserting how important you are by just actually writing it. I think those are some of the things. So having your, pri and, and this works in life too. It's like actually knowing what the real priorities are. And the priorities are not always the thing that you think you're hearing or the people that what someone's saying. Trust me, I'm gonna turn you into a great child. You just come study with me, I'm gonna tell you. That's such bullshit, you know? The, the, the point is, the point is you have to construct from your value system your own sets of priorities. From a piece of music, what actually drives the music? You know, obviously we talked in the Schumann about certain things and about harmonic things, about in intervals and whatever, but, but here certainly you could make a case for uh, take it easy on yourself, but just like when you, or when you decide to break that groove, if that is what you think makes the most dramatic sense. You can do that, but you've also established for us what that is and why then you want to break it becomes a very important expressive moment. Does that make sense? So, you know, phrase lengths, direction, right? And, and last, Movement, it's like, so when, when something's difficult, um, usually what happens is, when something's difficult for me, I always rush. So whenever I catch myself saying something is technically difficult, you know, I know I'm rushing. I lose track of time. So especially when things are difficult, technically difficult, catch yourself. And, and you, you catch yourself either losing time, and, and that's when you can try and solve things in such a way that makes you go with time, okay? Um, don't take on my disease, which is, you know, lifelong, but I try and work on that. But, um, and, and I think, I hope this is helpful. Thank you all very much.